This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So this last week I started filming my next short film and Action. thanks to Adorama, they actually lent me a Red V Raptor to use on the shoot. Paired with some Sigma Cine Primes, I briefly mentioned that in my last video. But in this video, I wanna talk about kind of my experience with the Raptor and sort of in a light comparison to my Komodo and kind of the differences between the two and why you might wanna pick one over another for a project. Now we aren't done shooting the film quite yet. We actually were only able to get a little over half the shots done in one night with the Raptor. So I'm actually gonna be filming the rest of the film with the Red Komodo, which should be a good comparison coming up in another video where I can really show the two side by side in the exact same shooting scenario, shooting and cross cutting in the same film and really see if it matters uh, if you're using one or the other. So I was obviously intrigued by the Raptor just because I am a Red owner having the Komodo and knowing how that camera kind of works and operates and wanting to use something that's basically like the big brother to it. So obviously the Komodo was designed to kind of be like a crash cam lower end version of Reds and the Raptor is kind of the elevated version of that. The body's just a little bit bigger but it has a lot more horsepower. It has a huge sensor on it. Actually so most full frame sensors are about 35, 36 millimeters wide right or at an angle whereas this camera has a 41 millimeter wide sensor in it that is a really large sensor which allows you to use a lot different lenses when filming so primarily while shooting the film you know i was going for that 240 cinemascope aspect ratio on the film and we mostly shot on the 35 millimeter and the 40 millimeter but when you put the lenses on it kind of felt like you were putting on an 18 millimeter on the komodo which came in really handy i mean really if you really want to get technical with it it doesn't matter just put an 18 millimeter on if you have a different kind of camera like a super 35 millimeter sensor but what this allows you to do is use lenses that are more high quality you know some lenses in this kind of prosumer market the wider you get sometimes you lose some quality or you get some distortion or maybe Maybe the lens is not as fast, whereas doing it this way, we could use the Sigma Cine 35mm T1.5 lens and kind of treat it like as if it's like a 20 millimeter or an 18 millimeter and get really wide and ha still have that really nice sharpness to the lens. Now, of course, this isn't always the case. There's plenty of lenses that will resolve great at 18 millimeters and do everything you need it to do. But in a lot of cases in this kind of market, it's just easier to get a nicer lens in a more like 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter focal length. But really the thing that was intriguing to me was that red cameras usually have a little bit of noise to them. They're true raw cameras which means that there's no noise reduction really happening inside the camera there is some noise reduction that can be turned on in post uh, in on the back end of the red workflow but for the most part you're getting a sort of noisy image even if you do black shade it every single time but with the v raptor because it has so much horsepower because that sensor is so big the 8k resolution the full frame it's base ISO is basically 1600 ISO and there's really not a lot of noise on this sensor and it makes it really easy to film in low light. Now, I don't always recommend filming in low light. You know, on this channel, I actually recommend filming overexposed, basically, you know, two stops higher than you maybe you would think or one stop higher more than you would think and then bring it all down later in post. But in this scenario, we were using pretty small lights and we were trying to shoot in a 360 environment. We were doing these steady cam shots throughout the house where we needed the camera to move freely and have lights just like kind of hanging from the ceiling in weird spots and using practicals. So having that ability to go to T15 at 1600 ISO was really handy. Now I just have to admit, we did underexpose a few shots, but with a little noise reduction in post, it hasn't seemed to be that big of an issue. So coming from the Komodo, that was definitely a really awesome thing. There's just a lot of dynamic range on this camera. I turned it on. That full frame look was just really nice. And there's just so much so much latitude there. And then when you open a lens with the T15, it's just it's just this really crazy, dreamy look. Not something I recommend on every like narrative project, but it's something I wanted to try it on this just to get my hands on the camera and practice. This is just another one of those practice short films, anyways. So the camera is not huge by any means. It's kind of your kind of standard size at this point. It's definitely bigger than the red Komodo, but in a practical use scenario if you put these two side by side and you rigged them up you really want to tell a big difference they do have a lot of different mounting points on them the v raptor has a micro v mount built into the back of the camera which at first i feel like is an interesting concept right you're trying they're trying to slim down this camera they're trying to make this camera i think a lot of people that buy reds are kind of the red owner operator types 
kind of like me that are often you know using the camera by themselves or maybe just with an ac or whatever and they like to slim down the package so putting you know a micro v mount on the back of it was not the worst idea you know we're probably going to be transitioning to micro v mounts here going soon but for me it really caused some issues you you had to use those batteries which means you would if you already own a camera right now and you were going to upgrade to the v raptor you'd have to buy all new batteries now they do make an adapter that makes it come off the back a little bit more and you can put old v mounts on there or gold mounts which is just kind of unfortunate i don't want to have to use an adapter the problem is that the plugs on the back the the ports actually get in the way if you try to use a bigger battery because they have the v mount inset kind of into the body itself. I understand the choice to do this, but I would not do this. I think I would maybe, if I own this camera, I would rig it up as if I was rigging up like an Alexa Mini or even my Komodo. I would have another plate that's coming off the rails or something off the back that has its own uh, battery plate there that I could, you know, put much more D-taps on there, maybe a D-tap splitter. Just more options to rig things up and not be limited to that V-mount that comes with the camera. Also, I prefer gold mount over V-mount, so that's kind of unfortunate too. We had to use these little micro V-mount batteries. Definitely not the end of the world, but when you're paying $30,000 for a camera, you wanted to have the easiest modularity to it, which I really liked about RED before. They were always very modular. You could upgrade the camera, swap out the sensors, everything kind of worked together. But now they've kind of brought everything together as if it's just like this one unibody construction, which is fine. I heard there's a reason for that, and I'm not, you know, completely complaining about that. But I think that if I like just had to buy a camera right now, maybe I'd buy a Monstro over a V Raptor. So real quick, I need to take a break and talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present yourself online. So as a filmmaker, you definitely need a website. So if you're looking to build one right now, you can do that with Squarespace. You can start with one of their pre-existing templates to get going, or you can build a website from scratch just to your own liking. Now I've been using Squarespace for over like a decade now and I've just loved it so much because I've been able to update my website on the fly. I've been able to receive job inquiries through that using my contact form and just put videos and you know content that I'm creating on the website whenever I need to and it's just so easy to update and edit. So that's why I've never left Squarespace for basically the entirety of my career. The back end just allows you to adjust things really easily, the style and the look of it, or to upload those videos right from Vimeo or YouTube. YouTube and just embed them right into your site. So if you're looking to create something like that right now, well, you can just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off. And I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Which brings me to like to the touch screen on top of it. You know, they have, the they teamed up with Smell HD to put this touch screen that goes directly with the Raptor. Really awesome because you can control the Raptor from the touch screen. Um, and it just has one cable that powers and runs the image to the monitor, which is really nice. But see, the last models of Reds had their own monitoring system like that too, that had no cable, which was really nice. If you wanted to you know, just run and gun like that. You could just mount the monitor on top and there would be no cables at all. And I understand they did this because it's easier if something goes wrong to just replace that one cable than to take apart the monitor and redo the whole pogo system on the bottom of it. And I understand that. And I also understand that now if you want to put it on an arm, if you want to move the monitor farther away, that you would also have to put a new attachment on there. Uh, another, you know, basically run a wire to it to do that. Whereas this one just has the wire on it all the time, which is fine because they solve those problems for you. But when the wire is on it all the time, you have to loop it around its mount and you just have this wire. You just have these like extra cabling there all the time. That's just really unnecessary. But you know, compared to my red Komodo where I have to have a power adapter and I have to have to have SDI running to it, I suppose it's not that big of a deal. These are like little quirks that I would just say when you're buying a $30,000 camera that you would maybe need to consider. I mean, this is probably like gonna be the biggest camera purchase you might have in the owner operator space next to, you know, like a Venice or an Aria Alexa or whatever. So it's like kind of like, I just wish I had a little bit different features in that way. But for the most part, shooting on this camera was kind of a dream. The image just looks really nice. Just that full frame sensor, you know, you're able just to go really wide if you want to and go as just shallow as humanly possible. If you want to, you don't, need to do that all the time but it's all there basically you can shoot 8k red raw up to like 120 frames per second which i don't shoot slow motion that often but the ability to basically where the camera just gets out of the way right it's like you just want a camera that can do everything this camera can basically do everything you can go down in resolution and up that frame rate even farther you can just crop into super 35 and still get a 6k image if you just want to shoot super 35 it basically turns it into a komodo with just one click of a button and it's just a really nice camera 
to use, even though I did have those few little body complaints. It also has the ability to shoot raw in the same formats that the Komodo does. So you have low quality, medium quality, and high quality, but then you can also record proxies at the exact same time. So basically you'd be recording a raw file and then a ProRes file in conjunction with that file packaged together the entire time. So maybe your computer can't handle 8K footage. You know, actually my computer is pretty decent computer. I have not upgraded to an M1 yet, but I have the generation just before that. It's never one time bogged down on any footage, but it has been not playing back the 8K footage perfectly uh, as of right now. So if I would have recorded those proxies when doing this film, it would have been really nice and easy just to uh, edit with the proxies first and then reconnect the raw later. This is a really nice functionality when you're shooting kind of bigger projects and you want backups. It's just going to back up a ProRes file to the card for you at any given point. So this is be one of those things where you would invest in this camera to make sure that nothing is slowing you down on set. Like for lighting purposes, you know, we were able to shoot in that really low light, which obviously, you know, if I had control over just the lighting, like if I just had more powerful lights that I could hang in a 360 environment, well then it wouldn't really matter, right? So I could definitely shoot the rest. So I'm so shooting the rest of the film and you know another 15, 20 shots with the red Komodo is not going to be an issue at all. I'm just going to light a little bit more. Actually, with the speed booster and shooting at like 800 ISO on the Komodo, I'm actually getting a similar amount of light consumption because the speed booster on the Komodo adds another stop of light. So it's not that much difference when it comes down to that. Um, it's just a matter of the 6K resolution, the 8K resolution, and the sensor um, being a little less noisy just because of that bigger sensor size. So it's just all about controlling the variables. If I can control the light, then the Komodo doesn't matter. But if you just want the camera that you just turn on and everything just kind of works, well, the Raptor is something to consider. Now, it does cost quite a bit of money, and that's where we always talk about on the channel, is it worth it? If, you, if you've got the projects for it, if you can rent it out, then any camera is really worth it, it doesn't really matter. So these are just some quick thoughts I had on the Raptor, just coming from the perspective of a red Komodo user. Um, it's, it's a really nice camera, I really enjoyed it. But as far as the short film goes, when it comes out, and you'll be able to see the you know, the entire short film, and you'll be able to see that we intercut Komodo and Raptor throughout the entire film. I'd be curious to see what you guys think of that. See if you guys think that it mattered in this scenario, should we have just shot the whole thing on the Komodo or not? And we'll talk more about that a little bit in the behind the scenes video of the short film that will be coming out once I finish it, of course. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. It's a little short horror film that I, is kind of a spinoff of this bigger short horror sci-fi project that I'm working on. It's kind of a proof of concept of that. Um, it's something I just wanted to make in conjunction with Adorama. So there'll be also another video I'm making with Adorama that'll be coming out here shortly. So you can, I will post that and you can find that on their channel here soon as well. So be on the lookout for all that content coming here soon. And as always guys, I'm Sister Sakurai and see ya.